How's everyone doing? Um, thank you for having us, and it's a pleasure being here. And I just want to thank Mary Lou also for coming in. She was our seminar leader, so thank you. Um, and uh, thank you guys. That was just wonderful about the public history. Um, and I was thinking earlier uh, in Matthew's words when he was talking about invisibility. Um, and that's really what my project um, was about. So I was in the public history with Mary Lou uh, in the history of our everyday lives. Um, and we come from Silicon Valley. And you would think everything is mapped in Silicon Valley. So if you want to go to a restaurant, go into Google Maps, put it in, tells you the direction. In the neighborhood where I teach, um, in one of the main thoroughfares, on the street corners and in the empty uh, parking lots at night, spring restaurants. So some of them are very elaborate. They have canopies, they have seats. Recently one had a big sign saying grand opening, right? But these places aren't mapped. They're not in Google, believe it or not, in Silicon Valley. Um, and that's really what my project was about. It was about telling directions to places that aren't mapped um, and allowing my students to map their own histories and their own lives. And um, that's what Silicon Valley's Ultra Lado was about. And my students were able to do it and to break that invisibility through filmmaking. And um, Axel's film that he'll be talking about won our district uh, contest on immigration in the multimedia contest. He has uh, a plaque from the California State Senate and the United States Congress uh, for his film. So that's pretty impressive of his film being out there and being shown and breaking that invisibility now here and being able to see his film um, so thank you for inviting us, and I'm going to turn it over to this amazing young student here. Good afternoon. My name is Axel Saldana, and I'm a junior at Mount Pleasant High School in San Jose, California. The purpose of this project came out of the seminar of our everyday lives, how my life as an immigrant is similar to many other immigrants. Also included in this project is a history of present-day Santa Clara Valley. The history of the valley goes back to the 19th and 20th centuries where only whites were able to buy houses, own property, and work in the wealthy parts of the town, of the valley. Many immigrants had to live in the east side and work in farm fields or canneries, for example, canning food or picking up fruit from trees. In the 1960s, a civil rights leader, Cesar Chavez, fought for higher wages and better working conditions. Today, the canneries are gone, big tech companies are forming, and new immigrants are coming. Not just that, but where technology started to become bigger and bigger till now where you could find the main headquarters of really big companies, such as Apple, Facebook, and Google. Now I'm going to talk about the progress of the film. For the film production, we had to, write, we had to know what days we had to film, what time, if our whole group could go film, write a script, all the basics that are required to make a film. We persevered through many retakes. For example, retaking a shot because the camera was too shaky or the lighting was bad. Other technical difficulties we include recording my voice again because I sounded too loud or quiet, or in some rare occasions where our footage got corrupted and got deleted, but we persevered through it and started again. Some of, highlight, some of the highlights of a filming experience was filming at Google's headquarters, commonly known as Google Plex, and at the Plaza of Cesar Chavez in San Jose. We are grateful that these big innovative companies let us film in these glorious places. Personally, I am working hard every day to soon become a Google employee. We wish we had a bit more time to make the film even better. Finally, none of this could have been possible without the community I had around me. My group members that I got close to helped me a lot making the film, especially my teacher, Mr. Cavada. What surprised me the most were the different communities in San Jose. For example, in, Caesar, in the Cesar Chavez area where we went to go film, everyone who we saw outside was saying, good morning, good afternoon, have a nice day. It might be something small, but it surprised me a lot since I don't see that often, especially in San, East Side San Jose. All I know, I wanted to make a message that not all Mexicans are the same. We should start breaking stereotypes. It's something I've been wanting to do and will continue to strive for. Thank you for listening, and now you can watch my film.
My name is Saxon, and this is my story. I am from Michoacán, and at six, my parents decided to move to the United States because they heard that they will have a better life than the one that they were currently living in Mexico. My parents took my brother and I to Tijuana, where we all crossed the border at separate times. From what I remember, I was the first one to cross it and being with, meeting with a coyote and then falling asleep. After I woke up, I was with my uncle in Los Angeles, which I did not know very well. All I know was that he was my mom's brother. And then we drove to San Jose. It was scary for me because that was the first time I was separated from my parents. And I did not know any of my family members in the United States. And I did not know how to communicate with some because I did not know English. My brother finally crossed the border. I was very happy to see him because he's the only one that I really knew and I could communicate with. After three more weeks passed, I thought my parents would finally cross the border too, but I was wrong. They did not cross the border until six months later. I was very glad to see them because I thought I would never see them ever again. It was my parents' decision to come to the United States because in Dos Aguas, Mexico, where we lived, there was a lot of gang activity going on and it was not a very educated or wealthy town. My parents came to the U.S. for a better life for me and my big brother to have a better education. My mom and dad faced the barriers of learning English and are still trying to reach their dreams of having a better life here than in Mexico. Today my dad built Silicon Valley with his hands and my mom works at a Mexican bakery making traditional bread that you could find in Mexico. I found it pretty easy to learn English, even though when I came here, I spoke Spanish when I first started school. But other people also spoke Spanish, so it was easier for me to make friends. My favorite memories is when I won the soccer league at school. I would like to go visit Mexico one day because I don't really remember it, and I have friends back there. They are pros and cons about life in the east side. There are dirty places often filled with graffiti, beer bottles on the ground, but the good things Eastside has places that no other city has like the Plaza de Cesar Chavez, named after him who grew up in the Eastside barrier called Sal Si Puedes, get out if you can. This is where I lived. What I think Silicon Valley thinks about Mexicans is that they are dirty and think we are all in gangs. When I grow up, I want to be a software engineer. I want to attend a good college. My brother goes to Evergreen College and is studying to become an engineer. Overall, I don't come from an educated family. Not all educated, some dropped out of middle school. To me, education it is important because without it, you can't get a future or a major. I imagine myself working at Google. I am proof that all Mexicans are equal and have rights. I am the new Silicon Valley. We'd like to open the floor up for questions, for a few questions, uh, before the students will be available at the displays in the back. Any questions from the audience? Can you talk more about your first days? I mean, that just, when you were here by yourself and then you were waiting for your brother, can you talk more about, if you feel comfortable talking more yeah. about that? Well, like, when I first got here, like I said, I didn't know any family members here, other than like, my uncle picking him, picking me up, be like, and me saying, oh, who are you? He's like, oh, I'm your mom's brother. He's like, oh, you know, all right, I guess I have to go with you. <laughs> and, and then from there, it took a while for my brother to cross the border too. But I remember my dad saying that we had an uncle that lived over here, and good thing he lived in San Jose as well, so I stayed with him for a while until my brother crossed the border. And then from there, it took a while too. Like, I remember every day asking my uncle, was like, oh, when is my mom and dad crossing the border? He's like, it would just say, next week, next week we'll come. I'll say, oh, where are my parents? It's like, oh, don't worry, they're coming next week. And time passed, six months later, they finally came. I remember, too, crying here and there. We're like, oh, I'm not going to see my parents anymore. And then at first, the first school I went to was a bilingual school. So they spoke Spanish and English. They had some classes only for Spanish speakers. We're also giving you a class for English, like, to learn it. 
And then from there, my, we finally moved out to the east side of San Jose, where I went to an old English school. And from there, I started to learn more English. And that's where I made like, more friends, too, that learned Spanish. So from there, I started. Again, just in awe of, of y'all. Um, so you've had some really powerful experiences, I think, with research and filmmaking and field work. And I'm wondering what impact um, those experiences have had on your plans for the future. After taking Mr. Cavada's class, it has made me reconsider of what I really want to study. Like I was saying in the film how I wanted to become a software engineer. But after taking his class, it has made me think like filming Filming got to being one of my passions now. I remember before when I took his class, it was like, oh, I don't like filming at all. That filming was just being in movies. But after taking his class, like I said, it, it has grown into a passion of mine. And now I know it's not just making movies. It could be like making commercials or other advertisements, other stuff to, that has to do with them. So now I'm really thinking about my choices. Like, is there something to do with film or still in the technology industry? I think we're safe now. Um, I'd just like to say one final, one final comment that um, this is the impact of the Yale National Initiative. I think this essentially is the value of this type of work. This is why we as teachers go to the library and research for hours and write and occasionally cry in the corner um, <laughs> when we're going over our curriculum units because to hear these students and to, to hear their stories and to have it brought forth in this forum is incredible. And I thank you all for um, listening to that.